Instead of helping and aiding the Vietnamese people, I saw that we were party to their deliberate and systematic destruction. The Vietnamese were considered, all considered, less than humans, inferiors. We called them gooks, slopes. Their lives weren't worth anything to us because we've been taught to believe that they were all fanatical and that they were all VC or VC sympathizers, even the children. Many of us, however, began to understand through our personal experiences in Vietnam the depth of the lies and deceptions practiced upon us and the American people by our country's leaders. It was they who trained us to kill without question and to hate our enemy, the Vietnamese. They concocted such phrases as kill ratios, search and destroy, free fire zones, secure areas, and so on to mask the reality of their combat policy in Vietnam. I make no apology for this act of resistance. I could do nothing else at the time. But underground life has become intolerable to me. So I'm here today to draw attention to the true facts concerning my case and the cases of tens of thousands just like me. We are not criminals to be hunted and, and imprisoned. Over a half million of us have deserted the military since 1965. Most of us have already returned to the military to be punished with jail and bad discharges that will be carried around for the rest of our lives. And it is a supreme irony to be prosecuted by the very same men who planned and executed a genocidal war in Indochina. Now, inside this hearing room, Eddie Souders has surrendered himself. Urged on, he says, by a hand-to-mouth underground existence, it still nags at many of his fellow deserters who continue to look over their shoulders. Paul Udall, NBC News, Washington. How was your sound? One more time. Let me respectfully tell the American people that this is their dirtiest and longest war. The Vietnamese fight only in self-defense. Ultimately, the Americans will see the light. If not, they will defeat themselves.